Hi everyone, today is April 22nd. It has been four weeks since my first dose of the Moderna vaccine and I'm getting my second dose today. We'll see how it goes. I guess it's ready. Okay. There you go, you're fully vaccinated. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So I'll just sit there for Sit over there 15 minutes. Make sure you drink a lot today, okay? Okay. All right. Hi guys, this is Dr. Hong. Welcome back to the channel. Yes, just a few days ago, I have received my second dose of the Moderna vaccine. And to be honest with you all, I didn't have any of those common side effects. I felt mostly fine. And strangely enough, even the, my injection site was not as painful as the first time for some reason. But anyhow, how I like how I feel. Well, going back to the topic, and this week, actually, our long-term viewer on subscriber, Mama Helper, asked me about the Indian double mutant strain that has already been identified in California and want me to talk about it. So I looked into this topic and decided to combine this uh, mutations and vaccines topic. Now, we've talked about this topic in the past, about two months ago, and actually today I'm going to give an update and explain how or why these vaccines, even though they are not 100% effective and with all these mutations, the vaccines are still our best bet to fight and stop the virus from progressing and you know keep going on. Now without further ado, let's go into the topic. So like I said at the beginning, today we are going to talk about why vaccines are still our best bet to help fight and stop this virus. Actually, I'm going to present two sides of the argument for and against this claim. And first, a disclaimer, this video is my summary and interpretation of publicly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any purpose to uh, give advice on diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of any diseases, and I do not have affiliations with any commercial companies if I mention in the videos. Let's first take a look of this table that summarizes some of the most notable variants. We have the Brazil, South Africa, and UK variants. Most notably, these variants all are more transmissible compared to the original one because of the mutation that is happening in the spike protein. Now, with the exceptions of the South Africa variants, both the Brazil and the UK one are believed to be more lethal than the original strain. Most recently, this India variant that are believed to be responsible for some of the surges in the countries have this particularly new double mutation and its clinical relevancy are still under investigation. Most of the report currently saying that uh, the strains are not as frequently sequenced in the country so we don't know too much of this particular mutations at this point. And in this week's focus talk, let's first look at the central question, why vaccines are still our best bet to stop the coronavirus despite all of the mutations that are happening. And first, let's look at why does virus mutate and how vaccines could drive more mutation. Hmm, that's a different side of the thinking. And now on the opposite side, how vaccines could stop the spread of the mutation. So I'm going to present two sides of the arguments today. And will mutations possibly come to a conclusion? And lastly, what could be the future COVID vaccines look like? And fact number one, why does virus mutate? The first part of this answer is viruses do make mistakes during replications. Here is one of the scenario. We have our wild type virus that somehow makes a mistake and make a different spike protein depicted in green color. Now this mutation happened to bind worse on the ACE2 receptor that are, that are on our cell and that makes them cannot re replicate. And if they cannot replicate, eventually this mutation will disappear here and gone in the population. 
And another scenario here, we have another white virus that are mutated into this red versions on their spike protein. And this versions happen to be able to bind better on the ACE2 receptors. Now this will make it to replicate easier and replicate a lot in the populations, make them live long and prosper. And the second part to this question is selection pressures from antibodies. Now imagine a scenario that we have a virus that may mutate with this green type of a spike protein, and this protein can still be bind by the antibodies, either from naturally recovered or from uh, vaccines or even from uh, drugs, antibody drugs that we have. Now this makes the virus cannot bind and interact with the cells and therefore they cannot replicate leading to disappearance in the populations and on the other hand we have virus with a red mutation this prevent them from binding by the antibodies from various sources therapeutics from recovery or from vaccines now this makes them are able to enter the cells and replicate further again the end result is they will live long and be prosperous per and let's first look at the counter argument here how vaccines could drive more mutations and in this argument actually the vaccines are adding selection pressures to the viral populations currently all of the adenoviral vaccines and mrna vaccines are targeting the spike protein and the viruses are continuing their mutation process because of they just naturally making mistakes while they replicate and in fact the vaccines induced antibodies are helping to wipe out the older or the weaker mutant strings so in this fashion if you happen to be mutated in a form that are targeted by the um, vaccines they will not live on and if it happens to mutate in a form that can escape the antibody it will actually be able to survive and replicate further and this type of a selection pressure also known as artificial selection we are selecting for the viral spike protein that can bind better to our ACE2 receptor on the other side of the story, how vaccines could stop the spread of mutation even though they are helping to induce artificial selections. To answer this question, let's first identify this one most important fact, is that mutations can only happen when the virus are replicating. Now, when more people are getting vaccinated, more people are carrying the antibody and there will be less possible host for the virus to replicate. So the end result is that less replication leading to incomplete viral cycles and when they cannot complete their viral cycle, even though if they have the mutation, it will be stopped from spreading. Let's look at one example back in November in Denmark. They reported a type of a mutation called a cluster 5 mutation that was first identified in animal mink. Now after the identification, the country ran into very aggressive lockdown and calling of the mink populations and this cluster is no longer being reported. So the fact is that if you can stop the virus from replicating and doesn't matter what type of a mutation they have, you can stop them and vaccines is one of those two that we can use in the general population. Then I know there is a question, will mutation possibly come to a conclusion? So the short answer is possible. Now this ties into the concepts of convergent evolutions. In evolution sense, actually there are um, two selection pressures that can drive the evolutions or mutations of the virus. One being natural selection pressure, meaning the completing forces between the different variants. So here is an example. We have different type of different variants of the virus with different spike protein depicted in different color. So in this case, the 
red color virus can bind to the cells the best so they can infect more cells and more hosts and therefore the population will drive to one variant at the end where they are uh, dominated by this red variant and we are actually seeing those with the UK variants that are taking over the, as the major uh, strains in many of the countries and secondly uh, it can be done by artificial selection pressure, meaning vaccine selection pressures. So again, here we have uh, uh, different types of mutated virus with different spike proteins, slightly different. And when we have antibodies that can bind to the, say, green, yellow, and blue versions, the only thing left here is the red versions. So the red versions can bind to the cells and replicate more. So with both natural selections and artificial selection pressures, eventually we may be able to drive the virus into one final version or a few variants that is left in the future. And do we have evidence for that so far? Yes, possibly. Look at the Brazil, South Africa, and the UK variants. They all carry this N501Y. So this is a process of natural selection. So these variants are able to replicate the best. So these mutations are left in the population. So we still need to wait and see how the Indian mutant plays out in the uh, bigger picture. And then the last question, what could be in the future COVID vaccine if everything is still mutating all the time? So currently, all of the adenoviral vaccines and as well as the mRNA vaccines are targeting the spike protein. And the spike protein being the port of entry, you can almost think of it binding to our ACE2 receptor and enter our cells. So it makes sense for us to have uh, the vaccines that generate antibodies that can target this uh, spike now but on top of that actually another target is very important which is the nucleocapsid protein this protein commonly abbreviated as the m protein it wraps around the viral rna it plays a role in viral replications and it's actually quite conserved in different variants and for those of the people that are naturally recovered from the infections uh, there are antibodies that are identified that are targeting this nucleocapsid protein. So it makes sense for vaccine manufacturers to target this type of protein in their future vaccine development. And very quickly, here are the take-home messages for today. The viral mutations originate because of replication cycle mistakes. This is natural for them. And both natural selections uh, due to the competing forces among different variants and artificial selections from vaccines can lead to uh, different type of mutations. And antibodies from vaccines can actually add more selection pressures on those that can bind better or bind tighter to our cells and but viral replications is the key to mutations and if we can stop the replications there will be less mutation being spread in the populations and multiple mutations may converge at the end so future vaccines really need to explore less mutated key viral proteins such as the M protein to stay ahead of the game and to learn more, here are some of the links that I gather information for today. Feel free to check it out at the end. These links are in the description box down below. So I hope you find this video helpful and informative. And if you want to learn more about scientific facts and follow my regular COVID-19 update, please consider hitting that subscribe button button and clicking the like for this video and this channel need your support to reach more people so that is all for this week and if you have any more questions regarding covid the virus the vaccines please feel free to leave uh, all the questions in the comment section down below and i will see you again next sunday 7 p.m eastern standard time for another regular update on covid related science video and meanwhile please stay safe and healthy bye